Another update has come and gone and we're back looking at data mined information. Once again, Temple Yao has dug through the files in the latest Battlefield 5 patch and he's discovered plenty of hidden gems that DICE has been working on for the last few months. Now, as with all of these videos that cover unofficial information, please take this with a pinch of salt and keep your excitement in check. Data mining controversy recently made it to the top of the Battlefield 5 subreddit and it caused plenty of people to become angry that certain content didn't end up as anticipated. Remember, data mine content is all unreleased, it's unfinished and it's subject to change, so keep that in mind. Right then, let's get stuck into things. First of all, let's talk about what's coming after Chapter 4. And yes, I know Chapter 5 is coming after Chapter 4, but it's not coming straight away. There's going to be a gap in the middle. It appears that DICE is going to be running a month-long stint of challenges that focus around four weapon and gadget rewards and the Operation Underground map. There will be an additional four weekly challenges running after Chapter 4 has ended and before the start of Chapter 5, and the weapon rewards, they're quite interesting. The first week of this interim period is set to reward players with the Jungle Carbine. This is a shortened version of the Lee Enfield rifle. Now, the challenges during that week, they mention Operation Underground. One of the nodes needs you to complete a round of the map in order to progress. Now, the Jungle Carbine is a weapon intended for paratroopers due to its compact size, and according to the in-game files, this is going to be slotted into the Medic class as a bolt-action carbine primary. Week 2, right now, is not filled with a reward, but it will be filled with one, but all of the current challenges mention the Firestorm game mode. But fear not, it appears DICE is learning that players don't like being forced to play game modes that they don't want to play. All of the challenges give you a second option. So, for example, Two Kinds of People, one of the challenges, asks you to make it into the last 32 in a round of Firestorm, or simply win a round of any other game mode. So, that's nice and balanced. If you don't want to play Firestorm, it appears in Week 2, you don't have to do that. Then, in Week 3, the reward is set to be the Masson Machine Gun, a weapon we all know well from the days of Battlefield 1. But unlike the Battlefield 1 version, however, Battlefield 5 is going to get, supposedly, a shrunken down model that was used by Dutch forces during the interwar period. The challenges during that week, they focus on the Rush game mode on Operation Underground. We know that Rush is coming back as a limited time game mode, and it appears we're going to get some kind of dedicated Operation Underground playlist for that week. And then week four, the reward is the Fliegerfaust, a German prototype portable anti-aircraft launcher. This we've seen in footage before, but it is nice to hear that it could be making its way into multiplayer very soon. It's going to fire two salvos of unguided rockets. That means you need to lead your aerial targets, as you would with a Panzerfaust, for example, but you get two hits before you have to reload. This will likely become an assault gadget, although nothing is stated in the files on that for the moment. There is no class that this is assigned to. And just as a bonus, before we move on from Operation Underground, we have the in-game description for the map. Within the narrow tunnels of the German Underground Railway, passenger and supply trains are halted when artillery fire ruptures the ground above, causing both sides to navigate through the confined space to reach the other side. So that's the Operation Underground event happening between Chapters 4 and 5, which I've got to say, if that does become a real thing, I will be quite excited for that. And now we've got a few new weapons with gameplay to show you. First of all, the LAD machine gun, or the LAD machine gun as I'm going to call it. This was an experimental Soviet weapon that was chambered for the Tokarev pistol cartridge despite being a machine gun, and despite being belt-fed and having an integrated bipod, so... It's a machine gun that uses a pistol cartridge, which is kind of a bit strange. You can see from the gameplay, however, that this wouldn't be your standard MMG in Battlefield 5, but instead an LMG, which is nice to see. This means you wouldn't have to bipod it to be accurate, you can use optics instead. Now, this was a weapon that was part of the cancelled 5v5 game mode, as most of the weapons are that I'm going to mention in this segment of the video, and... As such, at the moment, they don't have any confirmed information around them as to whether they will make it into the base multiplayer game or not. 
Now, considering that we do know the weapons that were featured in the Chapter 4 trailer for the 5v5 mode, those have been confirmed as being converted into base game weapons, I'd find it surprising if the rest of these weapons weren't also converted as well. It would be essentially wasted content on DICE's part if they didn't convert them, and I think most Battlefield 5 players would welcome more weapons and options for their loadouts. Next up, we've got a clip of the Swiss K31-43 bolt action rifle. We've mentioned this before, but we've not seen gameplay of it. This would, of course, be a recon class weapon, and it features a double optic setup that works during gameplay, but it doesn't work 100% correctly. You're able to toggle between iron sights and a three times optic scope by pressing the select fire button. And as you can see here, the scope is just completely off center at the moment. There is a specialization plan for this weapon that increases the three times optic to a six times optic. Another interesting item found in the files is barbed wire. And no, I'm not talking about the buildable barbed wire fortification. This barbed wire can be freely placed on the ground and it slows down and damages enemies who walk through it. Now, currently it's stored as a gadget that would fit quite well in Battlefield 5, but whether it actually makes it into the multiplayer section of the game, as I've said with previous weapons, is anybody's guess. This is very likely a gadget from the cancelled 5v5 mode. And then we've got some footage of the RMN-50 grenade launcher. Make sure I say that properly. This was planned as part of the 5v5 game mode, and it fires a 50mm mortar shell from a converted Mosin Nagant rifle, and that's going to explode on a timer, whether it's in the air or whether it's hit the ground. An on-screen heads-up display shows a little meter that you can use, and that's going to help you fire the mortar to the correct distance, and it maxes out at 100 meters. But just like all the other weapons here, it's not clear if this is going to come to the game or not, but I thought I'd mention it because it was part of that 5v5 cancelled mode. And then, moving away from weapons themselves and onto weapon skins, a couple more have been uncovered in this latest data mine. They're definitely going to be love or hate weapon skins, as most of them are in Battlefield 5 anyway. The first one, a set of Halloween-inspired skins. These are going to be available for the STG, the Sten, the Lewis gun, and Lee Enfield rifles. You can see a few sharp blades have been attached to the SGG here. I think this is quite a cool skin, but the last time I said I liked a weapon skin, which I think was the Mermaid one, I got absolutely destroyed in a Reddit comment for saying that I like such a garish skin in Battlefield 5. But hey, I quite like the skin. I'd probably put that on my weapon. At the moment, we don't know whether these are going to be given away as some part of a Halloween event or if they will be available for Boins in the store. I don't really know which way DICE would go on that, but it would be nice if they were part of some kind of Halloween event for Battlefield 5. And then we've got the first signs of skins being made for the launch of the Pacific DLC. This one shows off a floral pattern on the side of the M1907 assault rifle, so you can kind of get the theme that they're going for with this skin, but again, it is rather garish and it completely changes the look of the weapon, so I would understand why some people wouldn't like that weapon skin. And then, to wrap things up for this video, I've got some very early information on potential settings that we're going to see for the rental servers in the private game system being built for Battlefield 5. Now, this is set to go live in September, according to the latest roadmap, and based on the first announcement, this system is going to be deployed in stages, and it's going to be updated based on community feedback with features that the community wants for their servers. So I think what we're seeing here is likely this first iteration, this first deployment of the feature with more basic systems just to allow players to get their servers up and running with different map and mode rotations. So first of all, we've got title, player count, game modes and maps, pre-round size, so you can select the minimum number of players that you need to join to start the game, select game modes and maps. Here you can configure the number of rotations the game has. A rotation consists of a game mode and map, and you must at least configure one rotation before you can create the game. Then there's a password system. Select a four-digit passcode for your private games. Available game modes, changing this game size will reset selected game modes and maps. And then we've got create custom game, start custom game, create new config, config name, and config settings. 
Now, of course, without any visual context, it's hard to say how this is all going to fit together. And I think there's some overlap here. And there's definitely some that are not features of the servers and may very well be just menu systems. But there's mentions of password protection, which is, of course, important if you don't want people coming into your server. Clans and teams that want to practice, they don't want other people coming in and ruining their games. Or even people like me, I'm a content creator. I need to go into the game, remove the HUD and create some kind of screenshot as a thumbnail for a video so if I can do that without having to disrupt a public server or just standing at the back not doing anything that would be great but there is no mention of kick and ban in this list and that's not to say that that's not going to happen but not seeing it mentioned I know those are very important functions for anyone who wants to run their own server properly so I think we're gonna have to wait and see what happens these are very early mentions of the system anyway so, there we go, a nice dump of data from the Battlefield 5 mines. But please, as always, now that you've watched this video, please don't take this information as 100% true and official because it just isn't 100% true and official. And keep your expectations in check. Make sure you're always taking this stuff with a pinch of salt. But thanks very much for watching, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.